Okay, in this video we're going to talk about amp draw, uh, how much wear is on your walk belt. The number one thing to look for in working on a treadmill is how many amps it is pulling. And what we're concerned about is when we're on the treadmill using it, the wear on the back of the belt creates a lot of friction, it creates um, a lot of work for the drive motor and the electronics. And when that amp draw gets really high, it starts burning out the electronics, it starts damaging the motors, and it can cause a lot of problems. So as a maintenance step, preventive maintenance, we really want to look and see how worn our belt is getting. And again, what we're referring to is the backing of the belt. Now, there's different ways of looking at this. Uh, this particular machine actually has an onboard diagnostics feature to uh, determine what the amp draw is. And we're also going to do a little cross-reference with, uh, with a clamp electric meter here, a multimeter, to figure out uh, what the amp draw is. Now, on this particular machine, underneath our hood here, you'll notice uh, there's a piece of paper here. This happens to be the wiring diagram for your machine. And at the same time, there's a wiring diagram on one side. On the other side, there's a lot of important information that tells you how to um, access the diagnostics. In this particular case, what the way to access the diagnostics on this machine is, we pull the key off, and our, our machine is on, but we pull the key off and the console goes blank. We take our stop and our speed up button, and we push both at the same time, while inserting the key. And we'll notice that there's a different display on the screen. This tells us a software issue. And this means that we're in level one of the diagnostics. There are five levels on this machine and there are also sub-levels under some of those. To access the next level, we simply hit our stop button. And we'll notice there's a different uh, readout. So we're on um, level two, level three, level four, Level five is what we're after. Once we hit level five, we're gonna hit our speed up and our speed down button at the same time. And we're gonna notice that the screen has changed. We have a series of zeros. Now, in the directions that I just had, it tells you to look in what was your calories window. Now, this is a little formula I've come up from working on the machines, and I've determined this by simply cross-referencing this as I've worked on different treadmills. Uh, and I've, certain brands, I've come up with different formulas that I use as a gauge. In this particular case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit start number three. I'm gonna let the machine come up to speed. There's a series of numbers here, but right now we're only concerned about the numbers in the lower right-hand corner. Right now, without a load, our machine is hovering right around 3.7 amps, 3.6. Now, I know my own body weight. I know the machine is set up, not slipping. I'm going to get on here, and I'm going to start walking at 3 miles an hour. And if you look at that number, you're going to notice it jumps up. We're at 4.3, 5.9, and that number will fluctuate a little bit. Because, first of all, from my footsteps, from my body weight, etc., so I want to walk on it for a minute or so, and I want to sort of average out what that number is going to be. I'm also looking at what the highest range of those numbers are. Right now, we kind of peaked out at 7. We're down at 6.7. That's how many amps the machine's pulling when it's loaded. And that's important, and that's what we're, what we're looking for is when it's loaded. What I found on this particular machine, with my body weight, at this speed, inclined flat, is that Anything under 10 amps is considered acceptable. If I see that that's starting to go at 10 amps or above, uh, that's a sign to me that it's time to change the walk belt because the backing of it underneath has gotten worn to the point to where the electronics and the motor is just working too hard to, uh, to maintain and it's going to cause problems for the electronics. They're going to get hot. Now, some machines will not have an onboard diagnostics like this. So what I'm going to do in that case is I'm going to use a clamp meter and I'm going to clamp one of the motor leads because again we're going to pretend now that we don't have this but for now I am going to still leave that on. So I'm going to take my meter, I'm going to put this on at amps, I'm going to zero this out, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to clamp one of the motor wires. Now you'll notice on this particular treadmill there's four wires. There's two blue, a black, and a red. The black and the red are our motor leads. These other two blue wires are for a thermal switch. 
This is in case the machine gets really hot from what we're looking for. This will actually disconnect inside the machine, uh, the thermal switch, and it will actually shut down on you. In this case, I'm going to clamp my red uh, motor lead. All right, I'm going to zero out my meter, so I'm at zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same test, but now I'm going to read my meter. We're going to go up three miles an hour again. I'm going to let the machine come up to speed. I'm going to start walking. Now there's going to be a difference between these two systems, but again, it's kind of a formula to simply look off of. And my numbers are jumping around much more in my meter, but again, I'm just trying to average those out as I see them. And as I watch that, it kind of peaked out around 7, just as our onboard diagnostics did. So between the two systems, they're both basically giving me pretty much the same type of reading. Most importantly, I know as a technician from working on this particular brand and others of, from this manufacturer, that anything under 10, I'm in good shape. So this particular machine, I would say the belt's good. I would just clean it, lubricate it, routine maintenance. Uh, no reason to replace the walk belt. It's good to go. That's it.